I'm Jenny Carlson. I'm Barry Trammell. Welcome to the Jenny and Barry Show. The Sooners are headed to San Antonio. The Alamo Bowl and Arizona await, but of course, bigger than the Riverwalk or the Wildcats, is the first college start for Jackson Arnold. We'll talk about that and much more as kickoff nears for OU's Bowl. But before we get to any of that, we want to say thanks to these sponsors for supporting the Jenny and Barry Show. The Oklahoma Ford Dealers Association, MidFirst Bank, Next Gen Roofing, Two Fellas Movers, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, 988, Oklahoma's Mental Health Lifeline. Drive into your best in Oklahoma Ford dealers today for the best deals on Ford's full lineup of trucks and SUVs. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And if you're getting ready to move, let's face it, a box of pizza and a case of beer just don't work like they used to. Nobody wants to help you move. But we know two fellows that love moving. At Two Fellows Moving Company, we offer free, no-strings quotes for your move. With more than 20 years' experience, we've pretty much moved it all. Our services don't end up moving either. Need to do some remodeling or spring cleaning? We have you covered with dumpster rentals and junk haul services. Remember, quotes are free, and there are no strings attached. If you're moving in Oklahoma, make sure to call the fellas. Visit twofellas.com for your free quote today. Well, Barry, this bowl got way, way, way more interesting for the Sooners when Dylan Gabriel left. I'm like you. I'm still not sure that I understand why Dylan Gabriel leaving was caused to feel okay, but we'll leave that for another time because Jackson Arnold's about to get his first college start. What do you want to see from the uh, the, the freshman quarterback as he leads the Sooners in the Salamo Bowl? I've thought well, I thought you sent me that question. I thought that's a heck of a question. I've been thinking about it. I think it's sort of simple. I want to see playmaking. I mean, we've been hearing about this guy for two years, and the uh, it's not just the recruiting geeks who say he's fabulous. I mean, you know, some inside people say, hey, this guy's great. Jeff Lebby apparently raved about Jackson Arnold to boosters. So you know, I, I got to take everybody at their word. It sounds like he is a great prospect, but the idea that he's that he's got a bigger upside than Dylan Gabriel, okay, somebody show me what that is. It's got to be the playmaking. It's got to be the big arm, the big plays. You know, we saw him for that half in Provo. We were there at Provo, yep. took over in the second half of a tight game, led the Sooners to victory, but the offense wasn't sensational. He makes the big, uh, the big pass on third down. Um, to uh, to keep that drive alive and, and run out the clock and preserve the victory. But it's sort of a management style of quarterbacking. Yeah. That's not what I want to see against Arizona. I want to see a quarterback who, who uh, might be the best player on the field. And if he can show signs of that, then I get a lot more optimistic about year one in the SEC. Yeah, you know, I do. I, I'm the same as you. I, I thought that that BYU performance was fairly muted. And I know, obviously, he comes in in emergency duty. It's not like, you know, Dylan Gabriel's hurt the week before and he's got, you know, a week to prepare. He got uh, Dylan Gabriel got hurt in practice and there's, you know, several days of game planning. So I get that it was an emergency situation that Jackson Arnold was thrust into, but felt like they put a lot of the playbook to the side against a, a BYU team that, you know, wasn't wasn't super fantastic finished the the year out of out of the bowl running so you know they were in a tight spot in BY, at BYU the Sooners were so it was more of a, a a tenuous situation when Jackson Arnold took over but yeah I thought we'd see more playmaking and it was much more um pedestrian I think than than I was expecting so I would like to see more out of him. Now, I think it's interesting because of what he's going to have around him, just what this Sooner offense looks like. You know, they obviously lost several offensive linemen. They do have a couple of veterans in McCade Matower and Walter Rouse who've decided to play in this game, which Jackson Arnold probably needs to be, you know, treating them to steak dinners until the bowl game. Because if those two had opted out as they are now out of eligibility, getting ready to prepare, prepare for the NFL draft, that offensive line would have been practically brand new across the board. I think they might have had one guy that had started for them um, heading into the bowl game. So the fact that they got those two starters to play in the bowl, big time important for uh, for Jackson Arnold. But then, you know, they should have, you look at the skill guys, they're going to be a little bit thin at running back with some some portal entries. But 
Uh, Gavin Sawchuk, their main guy late in the year, is going to be there. Receivers should be available. So they should have the skill guys to go out there and get the job done. And Barry, this Arizona team is is pretty good. I mean, they their their losses have been close calls. Um, they you know are a lot closer to uh, you know to to double digit wins to you know perfection if even if you want to go that far than they are to uh, you know anything close to 500. So this is a pretty good team. I think this offense is going to be tested. So um, you know just you know handling the offense getting it going. Um, I don't know if anybody can expect uh, this offense. I mean, it can't look as good as it did under Dylan Gabriel. Come on. We'd be foolish to think that's going to be, that's going to happen. But if they can score, you know, four or five touchdowns, I mean, I think that'd be a pretty good day for Jackson Arnold in this offense. Oh, I think it'd be fantastic. Um, you're right. Arizona is a good team. You know, in Arizona went to Mississippi state in September before we knew the Wildcats were any good. And before they knew they were any good. And they lost in overtime to a mediocre Mississippi State team. If Arizona wins that game, they're in the Cotton Bowl. They're going to be in the New Year Six. They'd be in the top 11 and, and be in a major bowl. So this is a, this is a, very, good, a very good team. Very similar in, in sort of uh, makeup to Florida State a year ago in that they're excited to be in the bowl game that the Sooners are in. Uh, very few opt-outs. Um, sort of a, a breakout season. Now, they don't have the history or the pedigree of Florida State, but the Seminoles had been down quite a few years before, before 2022, and Arizona's certainly mired in mediocrity for decades. But they're excited to be there, and if you go down there and beat them, got a high-powered offense, coach that everybody loves, this is the, they got their real football team, I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah. If you beat them, it's a really good win. So. Yeah. Um, I think that's what makes it an interesting game for me. Um, and, and Jackson Arnold in the debut game, you know, you, you mentioned uh, it, it's, a, it's a really good scenario for Jackson Arnold because good opponent, uh, fairly big stage, but in, it's the, at the end of the season in yeah. a game that really doesn't matter. You know, that's true. However, he is going to have a long runway next season. Sooners open up with Temple, Tulane, and Houston. I th yeah. think that's the or maybe it's Tulane, Temple, Houston. I can't remember the order, but three games on Owen Field. The Sooners should win. So, if you can get the victory in uh, San Antonio, coupled with those three games uh, to open twenty twenty four, he's going to have a lot of success behind his belt when the yeah. SEC days arrive with Tennessee coming to Norman. Yeah, and and that's that's going to be important. And I I think this does set up really nicely for Jackson Arnold. Now, obviously, there's a lot of pressure on him. I, I mean, even in a game that you know it, it it counts towards the Sooners' record, it counts towards the Wildcats' record. So in that sense, it does matter. But really, it's not going to determine much else beyond that. You're not playing for a playoff spot. You're not playing for conference uh, rankings, any of that stuff. So in that regard, it does not matter. So. Even with that, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot. Of, Jackson Arnold's got to know there's eyes on him, expectations on him. You know, even with those uh, parameters in place for this bowl game, clearly people that love the Sooners, uh, whether they're paid by the university and coach uh, football or they're a fan. I mean, anybody that's got ties to this school wants to see what Jackson Arnold looks like as the starter, as the guy. So the pressure is on. But at the same time, if there are screw ups, if there are interceptions, if there are fumbles, if there are mistakes, you know, this is the time when you can start to sort of see what does Jackson Arnold need moving into next year? You know, what kind of uh, scenarios does he need to see in practice during the spring, during workouts in the summer, during fall camp? And then in those preseason games, you're right, Barry, because those set up as games that are you know, really winnable for the Sooners. So it gives the Sooners a chance to really tailor make a lot of things around what is what is lacking with Jackson Arnold. And they'll find that out some in the bowl game. I don't think, again, I don't think it's a perfect setup because of that offensive line, you know, a new offensive coordinator. This is, even though it's a longer uh, practice time than you would have before a regular season game, this is still a relatively short amount of time for a new quarterback, a new offensive coordinator, and an offensive line that's trying to figure out who's playing what position. So it's not 
It's not going to look as refined, I don't think, as it will come the fall, come September. But I do think this is a chance. Um, like you said, Arizona, they've got their guys. This is, uh, you know, much like Florida State a year ago. And so the Sooners have a chance to go out there and show how much do they care? How much, how important is this? I think that's a lot of times what bowl games come down to. And my sense would be is that it, it's pretty darn important for Oklahoma to go out there and win this game. I don't know what you you think about that, having been around the guys, uh, players and coaches, but I, I would think that they would see this as a, a, you know, big game, go get that 11th win and, you know, head into the SEC with the, uh, the positives of a, of a bowl victory. Gary Gibbs was the football coach at OU for six years. And he was the defensive coordinator for the decade, most of the decade before that. And he was an assistant before that and a linebacker before that. So he had a quarter century of time with the Sooners, and he's not remembered for much. But the one thing I've remembered about Gary is this. Well, they asked him about the bigness of a game, and he said, they're all big. When you coach at Oklahoma, they're all big. So uh, this is a big game for Oklahoma for a lot of reasons. You just detailed them. but. Uh, when OU plays Arizona, it's just the natural order of things. The Sooners think they ought to win. Yeah. And the fans certainly think that. The administration certainly thinks that. The media thinks that. And, you know, even though we might say Arizona's really good or Arizona's favored or Arizona ought to win, the Oklahomas of college football ought to beat the Arizonas of college football. So if you lose, that's not good for the psyche of everybody. Yeah. So I think it's a big game, and it, you know it's even better for the Sooners that Arizona is really good. Had a no. great season. They got a coach that's on fire. Everybody loves him. He seems to have Arizona going in the right direction at just the right time. So you beat Arizona, and it really is propulsion for next season. I really think that. I really think that's uh, true. Hey, let me ask you a question, Jacko. Yeah. This bowl is important for. Fill in the blank, and you can't say Jackson Arnold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think that's going to be uh, on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, I think this defense is still a work in progress. I think they got a ton better, obviously, during the regular season. But I think to continue to take steps forward, I think you want to see this defense continuing to do that. And, you know, I, I think it's important for, for defense front to back. I mean, I think anytime, you know, they've got a chance to get out there, maybe see this. I mean, in Arizona, it's not somebody that Oklahoma has intimate knowledge of. So they're not going to know every in and out. Now, ironically, if they were staying in the Big 12, they would be getting to know Arizona in the next few years as the Wildcats prepare to come to the Big 12. But I think, I think this defense I think every time they step on the field, it's important. But I think the fact that they're going to be tested because they they don't know everything about Arizona. Um, Arizona playing in the Pac-12, I mean, that's become a league that's really offensive-minded. So I'm just going to say the entire defense need to take, needs to take another step forward as they get ready to go play in the SEC. You, and what you said earlier, the Oklahomas of the college football world are supposed to beat the Arizonas of the college football world. And if this Oklahoma defense is a unit that imposes its will, I'm going to say they need to go out and do that against Arizona. It's, I mean, I think it's probably important for Seth Luttrell. He's probably the other guy. But I think that defense, that's the thing I just, even though they got better, I think we just need to remember. A year ago, they were still very much struggling. And now they're on the cusp of sec them. And that's going to be an important thing to remember, just that they've got to continue to make big steps moving forward. You know, I, I would, um, I had Seth Luttrell in my mind, who this game is important for. First game as offensive coordinator. Uh, I'm reminded of the Alamo Bowl two years ago when the Sooners go down there with an interim coach, uh, sort of a sort of a slack off guy, Bob Stoops. I don't know whatever happened to that guy. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> they had a, uh, a freshman phenom quarterback. Now, Caleb Williams was, was not coming onto the scene. He was exiting the scene, as it turns out. Um, but uh, Cale Gundy was the interim offensive coordinator and clearly was not going forward. Jeff Lebby had already been hired. So uh, it was a little different circumstances. But the, and, and that offense was a little bit, it was a little bit shaky. Not everybody was playing in the bowl game, some opt-outs and what have you. 
but they, they really produced. And, uh, you know, Seth Luttrell's offense in 24 is, is going to be required to produce with Jackson Arnold. So this is a really good sort of a scene setter for, for Seth Luttrell and what he can bring to this Oklahoma offense. I think that's important, not just for the fans, uh, although it is important for the fans, but to future recruits, to the portal guys that are still out there, to the guys playing uh, that are going to be part of the 2024 offense. If this offense can go out and produce with a little bit of a makeshift situation, you mentioned the, the revamped line, a uh, little thin at tailback, new quarterback. To me, that's a very good sign for the Seth Luttrell era moving forward in Oklahoma football. And that's what it is. I mean, yeah. uh, OU offensive coordinators, Lebby's two years, that's a relatively short stint. Um, so um, this, is a, this, is a, this will be a new era of Oklahoma football. I really think so. You know, it's interesting. I'm curious what you think about Seth Luttrell in terms of, you know, we've heard a, a lot and you can go and look at the numbers and, you know, talk to players that played under him when he was offensive coordinator, a variety of places. And, you know, he's in that air raid, Mike Leach tree, you know, throw the ball around a lot and all that sort of thing. I don't know what it is, Barry, but in my head, Seth Luttrell is still the fullback. He's the fullback. He's the punishing guy. And I, Maybe it's just because I knew him as that type of player, and I don't necessarily think of him as like we're gonna throw it around a bunch. I don't know what it is about this, but I, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious to see what this looks like because you know I, I know that his pedigree is out there as being very much in the vein of Mike Leach, but um, will they throw it around more? I think they've got a guy in Jackson Arnold to do it. How much? I don't know. I mean, like, do you are, are, do you have a number in mind? Are you thinking, hey, they're going to throw it X amount of times a year with Latrell and Arnold? I, I just, I don't know if I'm to the point where I have a good sense of that yet. Here's what I think, Jacko. I have no idea. <laughs> I, had, I had Jim Latrell, his dad, the fullback on the 74, 75 national title team. Jim Latrell was on my, my show a couple of weeks ago. Jim Latrell said, now, he said, you know, Seth played or played under and then coached under Mike Leach and everybody t thinks air raid, but Seth will run the ball first. And I thought, well, I like that good run first type guy. Then I'm talking to Jill for Jill Farouk last week on the OU practice field. And I said, well, you got any, any field for Seth Luttrell yet? And he said, oh, love him to death. He's, he's a home run guy. He's an explosive guy. Uh, I said, what does that mean? He said, he's going to throw the ball all the time. So I don't know if he's going to run. I don't know if he's going to pass. I don't know what he's going to be. Um, you, you think of him as a fullback, and so do I. He also was an air raid fullback. So, you know, who knows? Uh, but this is the, sort of his chance to show us, right? Uh, show us what he's got. We, uh, you know, but frankly, I'm interested to see how much this offense changes from the Jeff Levy days. Levy? had elements of the air raid, but he also had a whole bunch of the Baylor or the old Baylor offense with the, yeah. the wide splits and the, you know, uh, run it. And so we'll see. Um, uh, but to me, that's the exciting thing about this Alamo Bowl, that it is the, the launch of the Seth Luttrell era and in many ways the launch of the Jackson Arnold era. Hey, you know, I thought it was interesting. Um, Jackson Arnold, uh, the same day that you were talking to Jalil Farouk, uh, Jackson Arnold did his first interview uh, after being uh, sort of crowned the, the next quarterback. And um, I, I asked him a little bit about Latrell because obviously, you know, Latrell's on staff this last season as an analyst. He can't do certain things. You know, there's a, there, there are limits to what the analyst can do. But I asked Jackson, I said, what what was your what was your connection or what was your communication or just how much did you, you work with Seth um, during the course of this last season? And he made the comment that in a lot of ways, they were learning the offense together. They were learning Lebby's offense, um, you know, terminology and, and plays and, and all that sort of thing together. So there was a decent amount of conversation between Seth Luttrell and Jackson Arnold as they were learning together what all of this looked like. So I thought that was interesting to know that, you know, obviously I, I suspected that they'd had some level of communication. Uh, those analysts I know are working, looking at film, you know, game plans, all that sort of stuff behind the scenes. But to know that there was that level of 
you know, just interaction between those two. I thought that was really interesting. And then, you know, you can sort of project from there that, you know, not only are they learning, but then they're talking. Well, what about this? Well, what do you think about this? Well, how would that work for you? What do you like in this situation? So the fact that they're together now, um, you know, as offensive coordinator and starting quarterback, it's been a relatively new uh, thing that they're in those two positions. But in reality, they may have had a lot more connection with each other than we might even imagine. So I'm curious to see what that looks like, because I would think that, you know, an offensive coordinator learning what a, a quarterback likes, what he prefers, you know, what he's seeing, how he's reacting, it's going to take some time. But it seems like maybe some of those inner workings of Latrell and Arnold, maybe that's already sort of happened, at least on some level. I'm fascinated by that, Barry. Yeah, it should, that should be fun and should be a good sign for this bowl game. I mean, clearly it'll help next year, get everything up and running in spring ball and off season and whatnot. But it should be a nice uh, edge also uh, in, in San Antonio just to try to get this victory, which, you know, you get to 11 wins. Um, you know, this, is, this was an easy OU schedule, well-documented, but still against an easy schedule, you ought to win a bunch and you go 11 and 2. That's a good year. Uh, you know, a lot of people want to beat 11 and 2, but the truth is 11 and 2 is a really good record. And if the Sooners can get there, you know, that's a, to me, that's a fabulous season for Brent Venables in year two. And the dichotomy, the, the, uh, the relationship between Seth Luttrell and Jackson Arnold, two guys that were not on our radar in <laughs> September as being the linchpins of the season finale. You know, that would be a, uh, you know, that's very high order in this bowl game in San Antonio. So are they getting to 11 wins? Let's get to the score predictions before we get out of here, Barry. What do you think? Sooners or Wildcats? I got to take take Arizona. Um, Just to me, the record in bowl games of teams where everybody's all in is just, it's fairly impressive the last three or four years since teams uh, the priorities of bowl games have gone down for a lot of players. The teams that have most of their team there has a decided advantage. We saw that with Florida State a year ago. OU yeah. wasn't, you know, they didn't bail out on the bowl game, but they had a lot of key players missing. And they're going to have key players missing this time. Arizona, very few. I think the Wildcats probably win a great game. I'm going to say 28 27 Arizona. Yeah, and I guess maybe I just don't see quite as many holes for the Sooners as I saw a year ago. And so, I mean, I and I know, again, I, all the things we've talked about with the newness and the offense and that offensive line, frankly, that concerns me as much as anything. That offensive line, who do they have? Just how much chemistry have they built in a short amount of time? So I think that may be the, the area that is of the most concern or should be of the most concern. Um, we're you know, not probably not going to talk about it a lot because – Offensive line is not something most people want to talk very much about, but I think that's where you're potentially going to see this game turn. But for whatever reason, I I think with the Jackson Arnold part of the equation and what I said earlier about the defense still really being pushed to continue to make improvement, to make strides, you know, I think Arizona for as good a year as they have, and I said earlier the Pac-12 has really had some good offenses, they do not have very many good defenses. So I think this will be if not the best defense that Arizona's faced all year, it's got to be up there towards the top. So I'm going to go Sooners. I'm going to go tight. I'm going to say 27-24 Oklahoma down in the Alamo Bowl, but I think it's going to be a heck of a game. And remember, that game is the Alamo Bowl December 28th, 8-15 in the evening for a kickoff. And we'll have all sorts of coverage of the Sooners at selloutcrowd.com as they get ready for the bowl game. You can check out our work there or at barrytrammell.com and jenny-carlson.com. If this happens to be your first time hearing or watching us, be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And if you like what you hear, please leave a review. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.